So my name is Charlie and I'm your moderator today. This is the inaugural digital series of webinars with the World Humanitarian Forum. Um, I'm going to move on now to Aya. Aya, would you be kind enough just to share a little bit about yourself and what you're doing? Uh, I want to first of all say Ramadan Mubarak for all those who will start observing tomorrow uh, and send my solidarity to all the Muslims in Africa and around the world. I was appointed uh, November 2018 by the African Union chairperson as the uh, first envoy on youth and uh, I've, I'm given a tough mission to serve the largest youth population in the world uh, in two years and, and to engage uh, especially to challenge old men <laughs> uh, how to engage their youth population and why they should care about them. A little bit about maybe what the African Union is doing because I know that many people might ask questions on what they use doing and especially on young people where we're 55 countries and we have a lot of uh, challenges not only on COVID but also we have weak uh, health infrastructures. We, we're already struggling with other diseases like uh, HIV and malaria and uh, Ebola outbreak and uh, it's adding to us. So even though we don't have the numbers of infection that uh, the world is, is suffering from, we still have a lot of socioeconomic impact that will affect us. Um, so the African Union actually started the response very early on in February when we had only few cases in Senegal and, and South Africa. Uh, we convened uh, the health ministers, I think about uh, 30 ministers showed up in Addis Ababa and uh, put together a task force uh, and a joint continental strategy, which I think it's, it was the first uh, as, as a continental uh, platform. And then also continued with, uh, you know, COVID funds like many initiatives but also a lot of member states took on uh, the same uh, recommendations to put on national funds uh, to respond to COVID. Uh, the chairperson of the union, uh, president of South Africa, also appointed four envoys who are business leaders to mobilize uh, private sector and, and think about post-COVID as well and uh, the recovery uh, plan. So my office is doing a couple of initiatives, but maybe I'll talk about three of them uh, in the sake of time. And you can go to a youth envoy uh, website and find out more. The first one is uh, the virtual AU youth consultation series. We started on the 13th of March, just trying to really uh, build a collective youth response and bring young people together in one platform and inform them or empower them with information. Because as you know, a couple of weeks ago, a lot of misinformation was uh, circulating and so with Africa CDC, which is the, uh, the leading uh, institution on the pandemic, we convened about 11 consultations, um, around 200 young people from over 40 countries. Uh, some of them also are young women groups uh, who are discussing particularly uh, girls and, and women. And, and then they went on to self-organize. So as we speak, many young people around the continent are just organizing these consultation with one standard format of reporting and guiding questions. So I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, the outcome of this. Uh, but yesterday we turned these consultation to be open uh, webinars because many young people asked for these briefings to be uh, more accessible. So I hosted yesterday the Africa CDC director. We had uh, 2,000 youth engaged live. Uh, we got some commitments from him, and I think that was that was great to see how we can really bring the AU close to young people. And they were challenging him uh, directly, and and at the end he made a commitment to support uh, a youth-led movement of. Uh, young people who can fight against COVID-19 and that's what we're doing basically building a movement to mobilize young people so we we'll continue with these webinars next week we will have the chairperson of the African Commission on Human Rights because we got a lot of questions just like uh, you were talking now about the refugees on you know the right of refugees the right of IDPs the youth with disability young women subjected to violence digital rights what are we doing about all of that so I think my role is really to bring decision makers close to young people to challenge them directly and to demand for their rights and for the right programs that they need to put in place. Um, the second initiative is the African Youth uh, Front on Coronavirus. So out of these consultations, we are trying to put together a multi-stakeholder advocacy group of youth networks to support the continental strategy. So uh, it's gonna be an African Union framework that give young people a seat at the table and contribute and report directly to member states uh, task force. And then the last one uh, to conclude with is the African Youth Charter Hustlers. Uh, so we're thinking about positioning young people 
uh, post-COVID uh, and, and the reform of service delivery, including the improvement of health uh, infrastructure in Africa and dealing with other pandemics, because this is not the first virus and it's gonna, not going to be the last one. And so uh, we're, we're building on the African Youth Charter that we have, which guarantees basically the right of African youth to enjoy uh, their best attainable state of physical, mental and spiritual health, and really mandates our member states and, and our ministries to deliver programs for youth. So so we will train these young people in advocacy and in pushing for the ratification of the charter and effective implementation of the charter. Uh, it's basically youth-led accountability. Um, and so application are still open till 30th of April. I encourage anyone uh, watching to, to check it out. And, and I'm just, uh, in general, I'm just proud of uh, African solidarity and how we have been able to show that, you know, we can lead as Africa because the word, I mean, the media coverage so far has been that Africa needs saving and Africa needs foreign assistance and will Africa really cope with, with the pandemic and, uh, and you know, Africa dealt with Ebola outbreak which killed more than 11,000 people and so I think that narrative needs to change and uh, what the African Union is doing, what young people on the front line uh, in different countries are doing is a testimony that Africa is leading and we just uh, need to recognize that and maybe the word can learn from it. That's great, thank you. And I, I think you'll all agree we've got um, quite an impressive uh, a panel here. Um, there's some really interesting things that you've mentioned there. I think um, most recently, the last point you made about um, about young people and changing the narrative really resonates with me because um, doing the same thing is not going to change the outcome. So we all we all know that we all know that phrase. So 